Well, hey, it's been a while. I haven't had a podcast in a while. But hey, I work for a living. So, you know, patience is a virtue. Just don't worry. I've got tons of stories to share with you. And I believe 99.9% of them are pretty damn compelling. The reason I'm doing the podcast, uh, I want you to understand how important it is for you to have stories in your own personal life so that you'll be able to connect and reflect and to relate with people that you talk to. It's very helpful in business, especially if you have chosen a career in sales. And even if you haven't chosen a career in sales and you're thinking about it, the more stories you have, the better you will be able to relate with the people that you're in front of, your prospects, and to be able to gain their trust. Well, let's start. Who is Noreen Donovan? Noreen Donovan started out in the advertising world and helped to launch the campaign for the Cabbage Patch Dolls, believe it or not. Then... She moved on to television as VP of programming. And she worked with a man that I got to meet one time, and I'm going to tell you about it in this story, Al Massini. She developed a couple of hits that I'm sure you've heard of. One, Star Search. Two, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Each show ran for more than 10 years, so she knows what she's doing. She worked with BET for years. Uh, She worked on The Magic of Music, the 20th anniversary of Songwriters Hall of Fame. Well, something else she created was a show called You Write the Songs. And the host of the show was Ben Vereen. Believe it or not, more people identified with Ben Vereen at that time in the mid-80s than any other person they could have even possibly chosen to be a host. Well, Noreen Donovan flew to D.C. She got in touch with our radio station through the promotion department, and she said, I'm launching this new show called You Write the Songs, and I need judges on it. And I'm looking for someone who could possibly be a full-time judge. Do you have anybody in mind? Vivian Vaughn was our promotion director at the time, and she said yes. As a matter of fact, Scott Woodside is working on the morning show with Jim Elliott, and he does a lot of freelancing. I think he would be perfect for that. So they put together a meeting with myself and Noreen Donovan. If they chose me, we would talk about it on the air and promote the TV show. Nothing's free, right? So I met at an exclusive restaurant at the Watergate Hotel. I mean, it was a five-star place back in the mid-80s. I can't remember the name of it. That was the only time I ate there, but all of the who's who's in the nation's capital ate there. Special executive chef came out, planned them. What do you want to eat? Well, I don't know. Let me see your menu. Well, you're the menu. Tell me what you want. And he would cook it from scratch. During lunch, Noreen told me all about the show, You Write the Songs, and it was decided then and there. She said, well, what we'd like to do is fly you to Hollywood for one of the tapings, and you'll be on with other judges. And it's pretty much an on-air live audition. I said, okay, wow. I mean, I was psyched. I was so damn excited. And back then, there was no email, there were no cell phones, and there were no electronic flight tickets. She gave me a piece of paper and an envelope, and she said, here's your ticket to LA. You'll be leaving on such and such a date. Just take this to the the Delta counter. A couple of days later, I go fly out to LA, walk up to the counter, hand them my ticket, get on the plane. The plane was a brand new plane. It was big. And they were first class round trip tickets. I'm sitting in first class, waiting for the plane to take off. I'm sitting there, my hands shaking. I'm having a drink and this guy next to me in a beautiful suit, dressed impeccably, says, you seem a little bit nervous. Have you ever flown before? I said, yeah, I've flown before, but I've never flown on anything this gigantic. It was a Lockheed L-1011. And the guy next to me said, you don't need to be so freaked out and scared. But he was the president of Lockheed. And he said, if I'm comfortable enough flying on one of my own airplanes, you need to be. I had a great flight. From then on, I was never afraid to fly ever on any type of an airliner. So I land and there's a driver there to pick me up. He said, hey, sir, welcome to Hollywood. Uh, I'm here with you, write the songs. I'm your driver, and I'm taking you to the Roosevelt Hotel. So I check in. There's a welcome gift basket, and they, they check me into a suite. I'm thinking, what the hell's going on here? I'm excited, man. I am so damn pumped about this. I mean, this could take me to the next level of my broadcasting career. 
And as soon as I check in, they said, hey, welcome. We want to send you to makeup. So I'm sitting in the makeup chair and this guy's talking and asking all about me and everything. Really nice guy. I said, so have you always been a hair designer? A hair, I mean, a hair and makeup person? He says, oh no, uh, I used to be on the Mouseketeers. My name's Cubby. Good Lord. I grew up watching the Mouseketeers. I can't believe you're doing my makeup. Next thing we do is go on set. And I sit down and I'm introduced to the other judges. Two of the judges were members of the group Air Supply. And it was myself and one other person who I can't remember. And they rolled tape and they did cutaways with us as judges. And we got to vote for the singer that we liked the best who actually wrote the song that they sang. The taping was over. I got up to leave. Noreen Donovan came up and she said, what are you doing tonight? I've planned to go out and get some drinks. She said, well, would you mind joining me at Chasen's restaurant tonight? I want to bring a friend and my associate. His name is Al Massini. And I said, oh, well, who, who's Al? What does he do? Well, right now, I, I do a lot of work for Al. He's created a lot of TV shows and everything else. So uh, I just wanted the three of us to go to dinner. I said, okay, can I have directions? Because there was no ways, no Google Maps. And she said, don't worry about a thing. We'll pick you up. And I said, what will you be driving? She laughed. She said, we'll be in a black limo in front of the Roosevelt Hotel at 6.30 p.m. Good grief. I said, oh, okay. All right. Trying to be cool, right? So we go to dinner. We're at Chasen's. And as we go in, this little guy by the name of Byron Allen goes up to Al Massini and says, Al, how are you doing? And Al says, I'm doing great. You want to join us for dinner? Byron was full of creativity and ideas. And he was pitching Al on ideas. And we're eating dinner. And I look around the room. I see Frank Sinatra. I see all kinds of stars that I've only seen in the movies. I'm thinking, wow. I'm in a dream. So during dinner, Al said, what are your goals? And I said, my goal is to be the next co-host with Mary Hart on Entertainment Tonight. And Al Massini said, well, you know, that's my show. And I about, I mean, I about lost my entire dinner. I had no idea that he was the creator of Entertainment Tonight. I said, oh, really? He said, yeah, I created it. It's mine. And Noreen is my executive producer on the show. And Noreen says, you know, it's amazing you would say this. This is perfect timing because we just lost a host and we're looking for a new co-host to work with Mary Hart. And this was the time that they were looking for a co-host. I don't remember who had just resigned or who was terminated, but they were looking for someone. So it was perfect timing for me. And they said, you look great. You had a great on-camera appearance. You would be perfect. You're the right age. You're in your mid-30s. And uh, we are interested I don't know if they were always interested in that or what, but what a fantastic evening. And Byron Allen is sitting there. He says, yeah, you can do this. You can do this. Everything's got prompters on it. You'll be fine. So Noreen said, Scott, do me a favor. Send me a video composition of some of the stuff and the works you've done. She said, as far as we're concerned, now listen to me carefully. As far as we are concerned, you are going to be the next co-host of entertainment tonight. I said, really? They said, yeah, you can take it to the bank, but I want you to send us the tape. And when you get back, you might want to put your house on the market because this will happen fast. Mm. Okay. And by the way, would you like something else to drink? Well, heck yeah, I got totally blasted. I mean, I couldn't sleep on the plane or anything. I'm just, oh, I can't believe this. Oh, my first stop from the airport is a liquor store in Prince George's County. A mile from the house. I walk in. The guy says, hey, Woodside, what's going on? Yeah, they knew me. And I said, I am so pumped. I want, I want a bottle of your best champagne. He said, what's the occasion? I said, I just got an offer to be the co-host on Entertainment Tonight. He said, you got to be freaking kidding me. I said, no, I'm serious. As a matter of fact, we got to sell our house and everything. And he says, hell, don't worry about the champagne. Congratulations. And he handled, handed me a, a bottle of Dom Perignon. I took it home. I told Cindy. I said, we have to sell the house. The next morning, I had to get back and do the morning show on Q107 WRQX, the ABC owned and operated radio station in DC. First thing in the morning, call, call a realtor and let's put the house on the market because we got to go, go, go. The next day, I get the tape together and I would call every day. Hey, may I speak to Noreen? She answered a couple of times and she said, hey, Scott, where's the tape? I said, it's on the way. I'll call you, Scott, when we get it. I called about a week later. I said, may I speak to Noreen Donovan? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, would you like to leave a message? 
So it was starting to be like, hey, don't worry about a thing. I'll have my people call your people type thing. They're very nice in LA, but I guess when it comes right down to it, they're not going to tell you whether or not they've made the decision, even though they told you they did. So I waited and I waited and I said, oh God, this is not... This is not panning out too well at all. I've told so many of my friends. I even talked about getting out of my contract at ABC. Ah, the first thing we had to do, I said, Cindy, take the damn house off of the market. We're not moving. I haven't heard from anybody from Entertainment Tonight. I don't know what the hell's going on. You know, a couple of weeks later, we're watching Entertainment Tonight. And guess who the new host was on ET? John Tesh. I could have had John Tesh's job while well, I was real close to John Tesh's job. So I did a little research years later and I said, I wonder why I didn't get that job. And apparently they had wanted John Tesh to do the job, but he was under contract. But he was able to get out of his contract, so Entertainment Tonight scarfed him up. But no professional courtesy to say, hey, Scott, I know you probably put your house on the market. Thank God we didn't sell the damn house with two little kids. So yeah, I could have been on Entertainment Tonight. I was a hair away from being on Entertainment Tonight. And that's just the way things go in life, right? There's a fork in the road every time you turn around. And it's very difficult to choose the correct fork. And sometimes when you do, there's a roadblock up ahead that you weren't aware of. So the moral of this story is always be able to pivot, always be able to reboot yourself, always be able to smile and make the most out of any situation so you can continue to move forward. With each experience you gain, you gain more confidence in yourself. So keep the faith and keep moving forward. And I'll see you on Entertainment Tonight. Not.